here in the building and on Zoom and on Facebook. Welcome to First Baptist Church. Let us begin our service with our prayer. changes that we made. 
So we'd like ask you to stay on, um, stay here, and on Zoom after worship. Those of you who have joined us on Facebook, if you could uh, jump over to Zoom so we can have that meeting. And the bylaws were, electronic copies of the bylaws were attached to the November newsletter, and we have paper copies here, the people here if you want to look at them. Um, then, after that meeting, um, we'll have the silent vigil for racial justice, unless, um, you know, Hurricane Nicole tells us that it's raining too hard. But we hope to have the silent vigil for racial justice after the meeting. And then tomorrow evening, our fall book group is meeting. We're reading The Color of Compromise, The Truth About the American Church's Complicity with Racism. We've been having a great discussion, and if you'd like to join us, you're welcome to. Um, the Zoom link was in the Green Steeple Weekly, and if you don't have that and you'd like to join us, uh, please email me and I'll get it to you. It's uh, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday, which is one of the most fun Sundays of the whole year because we give thanks. And um, it will be combined worship with our friend community, which is going to be lots of music. And as is our tradition, we will be receiving um, foodstuffs and financial um, contributions for to create Thanksgiving baskets for um, members and friends of, the, of our congregation. Um, and any extra, once we make our baskets, if we have any extra food, we'll, we will give it to the feeding chicken food shelf. And if we have any extra money, after buying turkeys and such, we'll give that money to a new place. So please uh, join us on that Sunday next week and uh, invite your friends and neighbors. It's a good Sunday uh, to invite people in. After church on Sunday next week, we are going to do, we're going to make a quick switch from Thanksgiving Sunday to uh, greeting the church for Advent, because the Sunday after Thanksgiving is the first Sunday of Advent. So after church next week, those who would like to can come and help us um, decorate the church for Advent and Christmas, which is really another fun thing to do. So please plan to do that. Then we're into Advent. So the Sunday after Chris, uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, our second hour is going to be an Advent workshop down in Fellowship Hall. We will be making Advent wreaths that folks can take home with real greens and real candles and, um, and ornaments and calendars and fun things. So that Sunday also would be a great Sunday to invite your friends and neighbors to come to church and stay through the Advent workshop after that. The week after that, Hopefully, if, if it all, if, if we get a box in time, we um, are going to be selling jewelry and ornaments from uh, Nightlight, um, which is a mission uh, project of ABC of International Ministries, ABC USA. Um, Nightlight is a program in Thailand that. Uh, Take cares for um, women who have been trafficked. It gives them skills and, and resources so that they can make positive changes in their lives. So we have the opportunity to buy some of the jewelry and the ornaments that these women have made. So on December 4th, we'll have a little jewelry and ornament sale. And there's other admin stuff I'll let you know about as it comes along. Any other announcements that I need to make? Okay, let us rise and begin our worship singing our congregational Detroit, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
continually creating something new. We are part of that creation, renewed, redeemed, and loved. Through all this change, God is with us. Though we struggle and doubt, yet God is faithful. Praise be to God who continually blesses us. Let our hearts, our voices, and our spirits sing God's praises. Again, page 27, God of Creation, all power.
I said to Karen that after Sarah Wright's presentation last week, I wasn't sure I wanted to follow her. <laughs> here goes. I'm pleased to have an opportunity to share my thoughts. On Sunday. As a young fellow, I was fortunate to have parents who worshiped God and were entirely committed to the faith and tradition in which they were raised. It opened the door for me to understand how wonderful it is to be a child of God. When I traveled to Germany with the American Field Service, I lived with a family that did not regularly attend church, and that puzzled me and challenged me to develop an understanding of those who have not found their faith. Many have been affected by war and other life challenges, which perhaps have closed doors, leading to other losses in their lives. <laughs> Excuse me. In 1957, I met my beloved Geneva and the experience of attending services at SBC opened the door further for my faith. We were the first marriage in the then newly renovated church building in 1962. Together, we were able to teach Sunday school, work with youth groups, and enjoy the love and support of the FBC family. Our strong faith assisted me in my many challenges, fulfilling my responsibilities while serving in the US Army. As I participated in establishing a program to help soldiers reacclimatize after having served in the military conflict zone, I was pleased to see the young soldiers open their hearts to the promise of peace. In the years that passed, Geneva and I, who've been married for 60 years, have functioned as a team and found support in both our loving family and in this, our church community. Teamwork matters. Having participated in sports throughout most of my life, I, excuse me, I see and appreciate the feeling of acceptance in those who share that experience. Today, we see a similar thing happening with young families and that they find support within sports teams and the families forming friendships which support and strengthen their own beliefs. However, school sports and other activities seem to go right through the weekend. Because of that, young families tire to the point that they are not able to keep doors open that they want to keep open, but somehow, can't find the energy to do so. We pray that they continue to be spiritual throughout their life. The opportunities to participate in church services, Sunday school, Bible study, and activities via live streaming has been a blessing through a COVID pandemic. Now, however, we look forward to always being together in person as the doors here at First Baptist Church are always open. Yes, we are surely blessed today and always. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to share a few thoughts about um, such Sunday today. You know, today is the day when we ask you to make a financial pledge in support of our church budget. And as you know, our ministries and our care of the building depend on the giving of those who make up our community. And so that's why we ask. But our motivations for giving are unique to each one of us. We all come up with our own. We all have our own motivations and our own reasons to give. And so the question is, why should you give and why or how will this commitment make a positive impact on your life? These are questions you have to answer for yourself. <laughs> but I will share a little bit. Uh, I'll share with you <clears throat> why I pledge. And I pledge for a couple of reasons. First, I pledge because this church has been my spiritual home since I was a kid. 
Even though I was away for almost 20 years, First Baptist has always been my home. And so this space and this community is holy ground for me. But that's not my main reason for pledging. I care deeply about this community, this building, and the role that First Baptist plays in the wider community. First Baptist has a unique calling. And all of us here and online, all of us have been called to this community. Our motto is green steeple, grateful people, growing in faith, proclaiming God's love, sharing Christ in Burlington and beyond. We've been called to this little corner of Burlington, one block away from the most walked street in Vermont. <clears throat> and right now we are surrounded by construction behind us and a big pit next door. <clears throat> Not quite next door, but close enough. But hopefully we will soon have hundreds, hundreds of neighbors. In this progressive city where Christians sometimes have a bad name, we are unapologetic about talking about Jesus and his loving, radical welcome of everybody, especially those who are excluded by others. We are Baptists who are inclusive and who stand up for historic Baptist principles. And that shouldn't be a big deal, but unfortunately, in the wider scheme, sometimes that is um, unusual or the, the common perception of who Baptists are is not us. We are ecumenical and interfaith. We work with and stand alongside other churches, alongside the Jewish and Muslim communities, as well as other faith communities. We are a congregation that speaks and worships in two different languages, all while being joined together in faith and fellowship and service. And that is extraordinary. We have an important voice in our region of Vermont and New Hampshire and in the ABC USA community as a whole. We have important work to do as we participate in caring for the vulnerable here and around the world. And we have important work to do here in our congregation as we teach our children and we encourage each other and we grow in faith together. I believe in this community and I am intrigued and inspired by the opportunities, the doors that continue to open in front of us. And that is why I pledge. Your turn.
joy to have the fire in the fire pump. <laughs> I don't feel quite so lonely up here. <laughs> um, at this time, I want to invite the kids to join me on the front pew.
He, Leonardo Sosa, who is 94 years old, died uh, this week from a brain tumor. And his family uh, lives in Lake Ozark, Missouri. And so uh, we have their address if you'd like to um, in touch with them. But supporting new Americans and, and folks coming here for a new life has been a, a part, an important part of First Baptist for a long time. And so um, we just wanted folks, Pat Reisner shared that information with me to share with all of you. In this time of prayer, we have such an opportunity to just rest in God's presence. It is a gift. It's an opportunity we always have in every moment, but we don't always take that opportunity. So at this moment, I invite you to put your feet on the floor and your shoulders back and to just rest for a moment in the Lord. Let us breathe in God and breathe out peace. Breathe in God and breathe out peace. In the prayer, there will be moments of silence where you can lift up your own prayers. And when I say God of all, uh, we, you are invited to say we lift our prayers to you. Let us sing our call to prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We are so thankful for this day. We have gathered this morning to hear your word and to sing your praise. We come from different places, but our hopes are much the same. We pray for your presence to fill us and sustain us. Our lives are filled with such goodness and blessing. We thank you for all that you provide for us our families, our livelihood, our lives, and our very breath. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. God of all, we lift our prayers to you. Compassionate God, we pray for ourselves and for others. We pray for those who are sick and in need of your healing power. We pray for Karen, for Frank, for Laura, for Nage, for Rebecca and her family, for Chuck, Ray, Kathy, and all those on our hearts. Bring them healing and comfort and strength. We pray for those who are grieving and for those who are dealing with difficult circumstances. We pray for our sister churches, New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church and Primary, Primera Iglesia Batista de Mayaguez in Puerto Rico. On this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for our veterans and their families. We thank them for their service, the veterans and their families. And we pray for their well being. We pray for those who are still in harm's way. And we pray for those who have come home, but who are still dealing with the wounds of war. On this, we continue to pray for our nation as a whole as we move forward after the election. We pray for the people of Burma, of Ukraine, of Afghanistan, and Ethiopia. We pray for all those who are hungry and fearful around the world. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of supplication.
God of all, we lift our prayers to you. Creator God, sometimes we struggle to see ourselves as creators made in your image. Sometimes we forget that you made us in love and that you call us to love you and love others in return. Sometimes we remember too clearly the pains and heartaches of the past. Sometimes we cling to these heartaches and even recreate those painful times. Sometimes we ignore your promise for our future. Sometimes we forget to turn to you in prayer. We forget to call on your name. Forgive us, gracious God. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of confession. God of all, we lift our prayers to you. Loving God, we lift up all these prayers to you, knowing that you hear them. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now sing together number 466, Take My Life and Let It Be. scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. 
And the Lord says, For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. Nor mo no more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at, at a hundred years will be considered a youth. And one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Opening doors is our stewardship theme and the theme for our ministries in 2023. And the image of opening doors leads us to contemplate openness and new ideas. It's a hopeful image full of possibilities. And so today we are all filling out little cards in support of the ministries of First Baptist for the coming year. It's a day of commitment and a day of vision a day of opening doors in order to step into God's big plans for us. We are called to participate in making God's vision for creation into our reality. Today's scripture text is beautiful and idyllic. It seems like a fantasy or a, or a nice description of heaven. But this text was written to a community in turmoil and actually in despair. A community in need of hope and guidance. And so this morning, we'll explore the community for whom this text was written, the details of the vision, and what this vision means for us. It is God's vision of joy. And we are called to live into this joy. Chapters 56 through 66 of the book of Isaiah were written by a prophet that scholars call third Isaiah. In Isaiah, it's a big book, and there's three Isaiahs in the book. The first 39 chapters of the book are probably, as you'll guess, first Isaiah. And they were written in Jerusalem between 742 and 701 BCE. We remember that the numbers go backwards in BC. 
First, Isaiah preached about the dangers posed to the nation of Judah from their turning away from God and trusting in other nations and other gods. Unfortunately, the kings of Judah did not listen to Isaiah. And Judah and Jerusalem were overrun and destroyed by the Babylonians, with many of their people taken into captivity in Babylon far from home. And that leads us to chapters 40 to 55, which is known as the work of Second Isaiah. This prophet was in Babylon, speaking to the exiles there, and he proclaimed a vision of their restoration in Jerusalem. Second Isaiah is the one who wrote, Comfort, O comfort ye my people, says your God. In the year 539 BCE, Babylon fell to the armies of Cyrus of Persia. And the following year, the exiles were allowed to go home, which was wonderful news. But life back in Jerusalem was not what they had expected. There was no new kingdom. There was no restoration of what they had lost, at least at first. For decades, they struggled while the city and the temple remained in ruins. Generations passed. And finally, the temple was rebuilt, but the people remained discouraged and resentful and divided. Those in charge excluded some. And they cared more for their rituals than for the care of the vulnerable. And so the people were disillusioned. They were disillusioned in their leaders, and many of them turned away from God, whom they felt had let them down. In the exile, God's going to bring us all back, and we come back, and it's not what we thought in generations past where they're struggling. And it is to this struggling, de dejected community that the prophet known as third Isaiah speaks. At the beginning of chapter 65, God says, I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. It was not that God had let the people down, but that the people had stopped calling upon and listening to God. So third Isaiah proclaims that if the people would return to God and care for each other, God would transform the world. The prophet writes, thus says the Lord, for I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. God, creator of all, chooses to create a new reality. All the bad stuff is to be put aside and no longer held to account. The fact that they didn't call God, he's going to put that aside. God's going to put that aside. It's a new start, a new chance the gift of a new beginning, not just for humanity, but for God. And this new reality is one of joy and delight, not just for humanity, but for God. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. The prophet then describes what God's joy looks like. It is not a bigger and fancier temple with all the latest bells and whistles. It is not the world bowed down in supplication, everybody doing what God wants at every moment. God's joy is no more weeping. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. 
God's joy is in children growing and healthy. And adults living to a ripe old age, young at 100 years. God's joy is in people living in their own homes and having enough to eat. God's joy is in people being treated fairly. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. God's joy is in claiming the people as loved and blessed, both now and in the future. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. The best part of God's joy is expressed in verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. This is quite a change from, I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask or to be found by those who did not seek me. God's greatest joy is, is being in relationship with us. Not from afar, but right here, as close as our very breath in every moment, guiding and sustaining us. The vision closes with images taken from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, from first Isaiah, reaching back to those days before all the trouble to reaffirm the future yet to come. Not only all people, but all nature, all creation will be at peace. This is God's joy. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Sounds pretty nice, yeah? Now, today, many of us can actually commiserate with third Isaiah's community. We are discouraged at times. We are disillusioned at times with our leaders in the circus that is Washington, D.C. We can feel discouraged. The violence that we feared that might occur last week during the elections didn't occur. But fear and demonization still continues. Burma and Ukraine are two heartbreaking examples of oppression and greed of places that are not as God intends. Climate change it is, is disrupting societies and causing chaos for the whole world. We've got some issues. And God knows that the world is in trouble. God knows that things aren't the way they ought to be. But in these troubled times, God's not discouraged. God is with us, speaking these words of hope and commitment and joy. So we are gathered this morning because God has called us together. Each person in our community, the, the unique constellation that is First Baptist, those who are here, those who are online, those who may not be with us at the moment, but are still part of our group. We've all been called together. Not only to contemplate God's vision of joy, but to work together for its embodiment. God has called us to model God's community, to advocate for God's justice in the world, and to teach our children about God's love and their identity as God's beloved. 
On this pledge Sunday, our pledges of support for 2023 are concrete expressions of our commitment to God's vision and our joyful opportunity to work with God through our pledges of money and time and energy and prayer. We manifest God's joy right here among us. And what, what a joyous gift it is to work with God. Our pledges mean that we will continue to gather for worship, fellowship, and prayer. We will continue to teach our children about God's love. We will continue to make music together in praise. We will continue to care for each other and to grow in faith and in practice. We will continue to offer our building as a place of gathering and safety. We will continue to be a presence in downtown Burlington, just one block from the most walked street in Vermont. Our pledges, our promises to each other mean that First Baptist will continue to feed the hungry. We will continue to help the vulnerable in our community and around the world. We will continue our welcome and support of refugees and new Americans. We will continue to advocate for safety and justice and peace for all. We will continue to welcome everybody, everybody. Our pledges mean that we will follow God's guidance into new ministries. We will open doors to new ideas and new opportunities. We'll make new partnerships to broaden our fellowship and our service to those in need. In ways large and small, our promises to each other and to God will help us to continue to share the good news of God's love. Today, we have the amazing and humbling opportunity to join together in affirming God's vision and pledging ourselves to tangibly and wholeheartedly participate in living out God's vision of joy. We can make our pledges with joy in thanksgiving for all that God has done and continues to do. Let us pray. God of joy, give us guidance and vision so that we might know your joy and participate in it. Empower us to open and walk through the doors that you have provided for us. Bless us as we commit ourselves to your service. Amen. We are called to serve our God with our hearts, our heads, our hands, and our resources. So let us joyfully give of ourselves so that others might live as God intends, in peace and in joy. To pledge to the ministries of First Baptist Church for the coming year, you can fill out one of those magenta pledge cards and place it in the offering plate, or you can send a confidential email to financial secretary at fbcburlingtonvt.com. And to contribute today to the ministries of First Baptist, you can give electronically through the Vanco mobile faith engagement app through our website um, by sending a check to the church office or for those who are here um, by placing your offering in the offering plate. Whether you are here or remote, your participation in our many ministries is deeply, deeply appreciated. Our many offerings will now be received.
hear our plea for one more gift, a generous spirit that we may find and use and return to you all that you have given, both ordinary and extraordinary. For you are the source and gift of life itself. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 570, As Saints of Old Their First Fruits Brought.
migrate over. 